Support for this episode is provided by listeners like you. If you'd like to be a part of the great people keeping this show going, please visit thelinecast.com slash donate. Welcome to The Linecast. I'm David Moulton. And I'm Becky Spenson. On this episode of The Linecast, we meet Rob Burrito, owner, founder, and expert burrito roller at Rob Burritos. For someone who eats almost 300 burritos a year, legally changed his last name to Burrito, love is a little bit of an understatement to say how much Rob actually cares about burritos. We get to hear the interesting story about the life-changing burrito that made his career. He sees the guy out at the grill, you know, just throw some, something strange on it. He's like, dude, that's not something weird, is it? I was like, <laughs> oh, that's just cow brains, dude. Yeah. Did and, he eat it? Well, it turned out that that had to be my burrito. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so my best Spanish, I was like, no, I meant chicken, please. So he threw chicken on top of cow brains, mixed it up. That's the best burrito I ever had. Rob tells us how he built a burrito kingdom, including five chains spanning central Pennsylvania, and also shares about some of his new interesting ventures. I have 110 of them right now. 110 of them? Yeah. Once you, once you get a couple of people know you have them, and they're just like, ah, my uncle has one in his garage. Do you want it? I'm just like, sure. You know, I'd rather, <laughs> rather take it than have it just you know, die or you know, rot or have somebody yeah. doesn't know what to do work on it. So, so you're like the moped emperor of your own <laughs> moped empire. Empire empire. Well, true. It's true. <laughs> One day I hope to have moped delivery at the shop. So. Enjoy the conversation. Rob, thanks for coming on the show. Of course. Could you tell us a little bit about how one becomes a regional burrito baron <laughs> like yourself? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, I don't know, it's it's not just applied to burritos, but just anything. Just find a passion for it and just go after it. Like, don't make any excuses. How did you first break into it, though? I mean, oh, uh, uh, that was, I was on tour with a band at the time uh, out in California. We stopped in San Francisco. Saw a friend I went to high school with, and uh, he said, hey, do you guys want to go get burritos? And we were like, well, sure, you know, like, four dudes from Pennsylvania are just like, burritos what you know and then, uh, <laughs> so we literally like walk out of his house walk around the corner like 400 feet burrito shop right there it was and we we're just like oh cool that was nice you know it's about like a pennsylvania size walk you know but uh then when we when we got in it was just like four animals just their pictures on a board with the parts listed under it in spanish and that's how you ordered and you got a burrito and, like uh, yo quiero la vaca Give me the cow? Uh, well, it, yeah, three. well, vodka, they'd be like, que parte, you know, like, what, what part do you want? You know, like, like a cow tongue? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Get, oh, <laughs> definitely tongue. Uh, and when I had the drummer on tour with us, uh, he didn't speak much Spanish, so I was just like, oh, dude, you got to try the sesos. <laughs> and uh, so he was just like, one sesos burrito, por favor, you know. <laughs> and uh, he didn't know that was cow brains, so he sees the guy at the grill. Yeah, you know, just throw some something strange on it. He's like, dude, that's not something weird, is it? I was like, <laughs> oh, that's just cow brains, dude. Yeah. You know? Did he eat it? Well, it turned out that that had to be my burrito. <laughs> and uh, so my best Spanish, I was like, no, I meant chicken, please. So he threw chicken on top of the cow brains, mixed it up. That's the best burrito I ever had. Wow. It was basically, it changed my life that day. It was pretty and amazing. And from that point on, you said, I'm dedicating well, to burrito baronhood. It, it, that something <laughs> in my brain clicked right then, you know. I don't know if it was the cow brains that wow. had something to do with that little prion in there floating around, but yeah, something in there caught my attention. And I was just like, yeah, you know, there's occasionally, I don't know if you ever had a meal or, you know, a certain beverage that's like just changed your mind about food or drinking in general. But that was one of the things for me that just, it clicked. And I was like, from then on, I was like, burritos are awesome. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I didn't know at that point that I was going to start a burrito shop, but I did know at that point that. I'm going to be looking out for burritos in the future. You know, so. <laughs> so, okay, so from that point, what did you have to eat more brains to get your brain to change oh, no. into opening up a burrito <laughs> shop? <laughs> well, no, I, I have gone back to that spot and had the, had my first burrito again, and it's it, it's as good as the first time. It's They are delicious. But uh, the, what I don't know if you want to get too into it, but brains are kind of, they have like a texture to them that you can't get anywhere else. Not Not a ton of flavor, but. And when you put it up against like a lean protein like chicken, it actually has an awesome, like it ad- makes it seem like a really rich, you know, adds some texture to the chicken. It's, it's amazing. But hmm. if you like eating brains, you know, 
In Pennsylvania or well, in Lancaster, you know, it's like brains didn't leave the cookbooks until like the mid twenties. So we've only been without brains in cookbooks for like 80 years around here. So <laughs> two generations out from eating brains. Wow. And my grandfather ate, I think it was monkey brains or something like that. <laughs> he liked that. So that's cruel, man. <laughs> yeah. monkey. <I'm just> <laughs> it was an African thing. So. Yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah. He spent a lot of time in Africa. And oh my God. He ate monkey brains. It, was also it wasn't like, like on that face of death video, was it? No, it's like... more like Temple of Doom. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh man. Monkey brains. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> so, anyways, so you grew up where? Uh, actually, I grew up mostly. I was born in New York, and then uh, I moved to Florida with my dad. He opened uh, like a. He was basically a fishmonger. He ran a fish shop down there, and then uh, eventually ended up back in PA. Went to, I guess, went to Redline. Yeah, went to Redline. And then as soon as I got, as soon as I graduated, it's like, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, toured the country with a bunch of punk rock bands and, uh, yeah, just, uh, lived out in California for a while. Lived in, uh, like Santa Monica, San Pedro, Long Beach, uh, San Diego, like Mission Beach area. Yeah. So, had tons of great burritos all the time. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, we actually got hired to play video games from Midway for a little while. That was pretty oh, fun. Yeah. It's like everyone's dream <laughs> yeah. to get hired to play video games, but, so, like, honestly, the day they called me with the job is the day I just decided to come back here, too. So it was just like, uh, I was like, it would be awesome to get paid 16 bucks an hour to play video games. <laughs> but I got to do something with myself, you know, so yeah. headed back to PA. And uh, well, I was looking for houses out in San Diego at the time, too. And it was like, you know, 300, 330,000 gets you like a really modest, mm. you know, two bedroom, tiny little thing. Then, like, back here, it was, like, 90 grand gets you a pool and two-car garage and stuff. So, <laughs> and a pot <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, was, yeah, that was kind of one of the decisions. But So, once you came back here, back you here. decided to open the shop? Like, Oh, well, no, I, it actually took a few years after I came back. Oh. Uh, uh, when I came back, I was still doing music. Yeah, and I still, you know, basically left as often as I could. Yeah, you know, just, I left for tour with, like, 35 bucks before, you know, just, hey, I'll come along with you guys, need somebody to sell merch or something like that, and... It just, it was a way to see the country. And then, uh, after, you know, a few times I started teaching guitar as well, uh, back over in New York. And while, while I was teaching guitar, uh, the gun shy from Lancaster actually asked me to go on a tour with him playing lead guitar for the band he was doing. And, uh, let's think here. So one of the fun things about that tour was actually that, uh, I put as a rider on all the places that they had to find the burrito shop for me to eat at. <laughs> wherever we played. So it was kind of funny. It got to be, you know, like for me, you know, like it started out kind of just as a joke, just like they have to find the best burrito in town for me. And then, yes, yeah, so, but you know, that turned into, you know, 120 days of touring the country, eating the best burrito of each town. And yeah, I started taking notes at that point. And yeah, I came back at first with a notebook, then toured with Matt two more times, like over the next three years. And kept compiling these notes and toured with a few other bands and then it's just like now I have a textbook on how to make burritos and you know my burrito experiences across the country and started applying it myself and making my own ones. Hmm. So that turned into basically turned into me making burritos for myself every Friday. And then whichever friends were around were lucky enough to, you know, have burritos too. And that turned into like friends demanding I do it every Friday. <laughs> and then you know, I decided, I was like, okay, cool. With uh, you guys throw in, we'll make burritos. And I, I grew all my salsa in my backyard. And every mm. Friday it was, yeah, just come over, grab a burrito. And it was like a burrito and a Pabst. Yeah, I just come enjoy. <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing very clearly that it wasn't a big jump for when you probably thought, I'm going to open a burrito shop. Your friends were like, where is this coming from? It was. It's Oh yeah, natural progression for sure. Yeah, it started out with like thirty friends were over the first day I officially did it, and then like within a year there was like one hundred and seventy people at my house on a Friday, <laughs> and then yeah, and wow. then uh, the cops thought I was selling drugs. I think because they held a stakeout at the house. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I had you know still from touring and stuff. I had a lot of friends from out of town, and they would you know, sometimes they would stop by and play in the garage for you know on Friday. So, uh, one of my friend's bands, uh, Toys to Kill on Recess Records, where they stayed over, played a show in the garage. And, oh. uh, yeah, they have white unmarked van with California plates. And, <laughs> oh man, the cuffs, I bet they thought they had me. <laughs> so they waited until they pulled out and, you know, they got like two blocks, emptied their van, you know, like found nothing. They were just like, 
what are you guys doing? They're like, we're looking for drugs. And it's just like, he's making burritos. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, yeah, right. You know, but, <laughs> go back, go back to one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. And yeah, that, yeah, of course, definitely not selling drugs or anything, but yeah. they are addictive, but. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, what I love hearing about your story so far is just your passion for good burritos and like oh, definitely. how much it's taken on more than this is just my job, nine to five or whatever. Sure. Like it's, it's part of your life. So are there any ways in particular that has shown itself in your life? Oh, burritos? Of course. Like, <laughs> well, oh, no, no. <laughs> gestures to girl. <girth. laughs> you can see by my size, you know, burritos obviously have something to do. Never with. trust a skinny cook. That's right. Well, yeah. that's true. I was just thinking, I actually, uh, where'd you say that? I just thought about that earlier today. It's just like, you should, the cook that you want to trust is the one that looks like they eat a little bit more than they should. Yeah. But it's, and it's from research. It really mm-hmm. is. You like, have to taste it. That I put on eight pounds last time I toured, uh, San Francisco eating burritos in about 10 days. It was very unhealthy, huh. but I'd had 36 burritos in <laughs> 10 days. It was amazing. I can't believe you didn't gain more. Yeah. Well. I, I did walk a lot. Yeah, I made sure I like, always work out. Got to work out. That's good. Yeah. Are but, you sick of burritos yet? Absolutely not. No. Do you have one every day? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I definitely eat about at least three hundred burritos a year. Wow. So. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. So, okay, so I, you've had all types of burritos. Let's mm. hear. I want to hear the best burrito, the craziest burrito, and the worst <laughs> burrito. So it's three burritos. Craziest. <laughs> okay. I mean, well, the best burrito, obviously, it's you know. Yep, that's the first one. Yeah, it's the one I fell in love with. That's, uh, at El Farolito in, uh, San Diego, or not San Diego, in, uh, San Francisco. Cow brains and chicken. Yeah. Cow okay. brains, yeah. Say so si pollo, por favor. <laughs> Super. All right, so, so what about the craziest? <laughs> Crazy. Most outrageous combination. Out, well, anything. Fusion and burritos don't get along. You know, like, there's an abomination called Curito. There's another one called, like, oh, man, I can't forget. The one that's sushi in a burrito size. And it's just, like, mm. sushi has been that size for a reason for a very long time. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but, you know, it's like, do you want an entire, you know, eight successive mouthfuls of raw tuna? You know, yeah. like, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, it's out there. Uh trying to think. The Curito is just, it, that's one of the ones, it's just, like, the... The card face palm every time I see one. It's just like, what are you guys doing? What what is that? What's uh, involved? actually I probably I probably shouldn't mention their name too much. You know, <laughs> like I'm not I talking trash on other shops. But, <laughs> you know, but they they do some bizarre stuff. It's just like you know they put like peanut butter and broccoli in their burritos sometimes. Mm. That doesn't sound it's, good at all. <laughs> well, me either, but it's on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> like it, yeah. yeah. So it, it, that was so weird. I had to try it. You know, like. If I see some mod ball, you know, I'll definitely go try it. Like I had, uh, had crickets last time I was in San Francisco. Mm. They were, whoa, it was like swallowing a toothbrush. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of taste do crickets have? Uh, they're actually not bad. They're deep fried. And, uh, you know, I, thankfully, cause they're like, they can harbor parasites. So you definitely should if you're going to eat grasshoppers, deep fry them. Uh, but they're, they, they taste it fine, but their back legs have that hair on them. And when you're swallowing mm. it, like I was pulling like antennae out of my teeth, like sw- trying to get down this back leg. It's like, uh, 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 you know, but Becky's over here lipping her lips. <laughs> yeah. she's, she's getting hungry. She's like, oh man. Yeah. So if, <laughs> if you see Chapelina's on the menu, definitely go for it. Uh, so would that be the it's worst an experience. one too? Oh no, definitely not. The worst one I had was, uh, Talk a friend about. of mine worked at, no, 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 definitely not. There's worse ones out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably the worst one I had was in Venice Beach. There was a, a place that just, they were doing it wrong. It was like, it was just like ham and cheddar and rice and beans. And it just, it was like a floppy donkey dick just like folded right over my hand. <laughs> just like, what is this? And like, and I took a picture of it. I was just like, this is the worst burrito I have ever had. <laughs> you know? It was just, it was just like that canned ham, just like processed cheese. What are you guys doing? <laughs> doing were, it wrong. Yeah, they were trying to make some money off of you know the cheapest ingredients possible. So huh. that's not how you do it. Burritos are about freshness. It's like freshness one hundred and one. That's the way to think. Yeah. So you gave us a little bit of the history of the use of cow brains in American cuisine. 
Oh, sure. <laughs> and uh, you've lived in central Pennsylvania, very, very different kind of place in California. And I'm sure you've traveled yes, everywhere in between. So, sure. And probably been to Mexico at least a few times, I'm guessing. But I actually haven't gone too far south. Uh, yeah, I have, of course, been to Tijuana. Yeah, you can't <laughs> live in San Diego without going there a few times. But yeah. uh, yeah, it's uh, the burritos I'm doing are actually uh, it's at California Institution. It's from you know, the Mission Street, like Mission area in San Francisco. And uh, it's where you know, everything's inside the burrito. As from when you get into like the south, you know, southwest Texas, Mexico, uh, you know, Baja California, you'll see the burritos there are like covered in sauce and they only normally have meat in them. Like a shred of beef or a pork or something like that. And that's all that's in them. And then there's a sauce over top of them. So yeah. that's not exactly what I'm going for. So there's not too much research to be done for sure. me there. So what do burritos look like across the rest of the U.S.? And and what is your hope here <laughs> in Central PA? <laughs> well, the, the fun is they kind of all look the same from the outside. You know, they, there's a few variations that I can tell. But in essence, it just looks like a tortilla with something inside that you can't see. You know, so it's, <laughs> it's, there's a little mystery involved with it. <laughs> Have you ever tried doing a mystery burrito? Of course. People ask for it all the time. Yeah? Yeah. Does he always change what's in it? No. We just Sometimes people are just like, I know it's going to be good, just whatever you feel like. And hmm. normally that, I hate suggesting it, don't do that. Don't come into the shop and do that. You know, so <laughs> if we're busy, it's very annoying that you're going to get chicken burrito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just uh, yeah, something that, you know, like if you made the chicken, of course, you're going to put the chicken in. You're just like, oh, I did that steak myself. Yeah. So. That's what we'll give you. Just whatever we feel we've done is best at the moment. So what's your goal with the atmosphere in your shops? Uh, you have three locations, right? Uh, five, I guess, actually. Five? Yeah. Well, my mind here. I, do your homework, I thought man. there was three. I thought there was... Okay. All right. So, so first off, list off where they're at, and then tell me what your... your, your uh, first app- one was in West York. Okay. Uh, I used to live out in that area. I knew it pretty well, and... The tiny little spot came up and it was the natural progression from the house. You know, it went from, you know, my house to an eight seat little takeout spot in West York. You know, um, after that one opened up in Dallas town where I live and it's awesome. I was just like, sweet. I get to walk to work. This rules. And then, uh, after that, people kept bugging me for, uh, well, actually, no, that, that was East York that people were bugging me for. But, uh, um, after Dallas town, the central market in York actually approached me and they were, having some trouble getting people in just like hmm. everyone that comes in here, you know, like looks like a cotton field. It, we need somebody kind of younger coming in. <laughs> and I was just like, sure. You know, like be glad to help you guys out. So I opened up in there and actually everyone that was coming out to my West York store, or Dallas town for lunch could actually stay in the city if that's where they were. You know, like the West York, it was kind of a drive to, you know, to get out there and back, you're spending a half hour in travel. So downtown it actually did really well. Uh, yeah, helped out the market too, which was really cool. And then it kind of helped turn around. I got some other vendors in there, which is really cool. And they're, they're doing all right. Nice. Yeah. And then, uh, from that one, uh, people have always been bugging me about East York, just like the Art Institute and, uh, YTI is out there. And yeah, I have friends that go there just like, dude, you need one in East York. So eventually found a spot at the Eastern Market in Pennsylvania or not in, uh, York. Yeah. York. But, uh, yeah, the Eastern Market in New York put one in there. Uh, a lot of a lot of the vendors from the Central Market also had to stand at East York. So as soon as the spot opened, they let me know about it, and there it was. And then, uh, of course, friends from Lancaster bugging me like, dude, I'm tired of driving over to York. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, yeah, that brought on checking out a spot over in Lancaster. Wow. So so what's like an average day or week look like for you traveling all these different places, man? <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you never know what it's going to be like. Uh, yeah, some, some days I'm working, you know, seven days a week open to close and other days I get to, you know, sit back and work on, you know, the next five year plan or mm. I get to go do research, which is always a blast. <laughs> so I was just up in New York this past weekend doing some research up there. So very exciting. Well, we're really enjoying talking to you, Rob, and we're going to head to break now. When we come back, we'll hear more about, uh, what you've got planned for the future and some of your other endeavors. Cool. Hey, everybody. We're here at Penn Cinema to find out what everyone's been talking about. Excuse me, why do you choose Penn Cinema? 
I like the seats. They're really comfy. <laughs> They're a lot nicer than most other places. Even my house. <laughs> oh, well, this place is great. I mean, it's popcorn. We got some, uh, we got a slushy machine over there. Found some, we got three clocks. Three clocks for the Lidditz, the Lancaster, and the effort of time, just in case, you know, you don't know what time it is in your area. That's why I love this place. They, they, they think about everybody, you know, very friendly. Has a nicer environment. It's clean and comfortable. It feels independent. You know, like it doesn't feel like part of a system. Like it feels like as big as it is and as polished as it is that it feels independent, you know? Bigger screen, better quality. So it's really close. It's very clean. We come here all the time. What do you like about Penn Cinema? The seats are my favorite thing. Very comfortable. On the rump. <laughs> 3D IMAX, the whole shebang. It has a down-home feel, and we love the atmosphere that Penn has created. He really tries to take into account what people want in a theater. It's really clean, and the seats are really comfy. <laughs> yeah, I like the seats. It's the best movie theater to come to. Well, you've heard what they have to say. Now come see for yourself. Check out Penn Cinema for first-class movies in a first-rate theater. Located at 541 Airport Road in Lidditz, PA. So someone in Lancaster wants a good burrito, and they've seen the sign, and they choose to go in your store. What are they going to notice that's different? Not just even in the food, but in the ambiance, the experience of eating at Robertis. Oh, I don't know where they've been. They've uh, been to Taco Bell. <laughs> uh, well, what I find is most people take like three steps in and then just lo immediately look like they're lost. Yeah, but the, the, we are a burrito shop. We serve burritos. Hopefully you've come for a burrito. You know, we don't need a huge menu. You know, basically, our, if the, your first time in there, we're going to ask you chicken, steak, or potato, and that's the only question you're getting. So with, uh, the burrito comes with everything on it. Yeah, it's cheese, rice, beans, salsa, sour cream, and guacamole standard. And then uh, if you want to add hot sauce, you can. If you're brave enough, just <laughs> take, take a step in the brave direction. But uh, yeah, that'll be it. Like First time in, I recommend just chicken burrito. We'll take care of the rest. Do you have any like pre-made specialty things that people can order? What do you mean? Like uh, if, I, if I walked in your store... Would there be any guidance for like something I might not think of that would be a good? Oh, absolutely reason? not. It's all no, no. no. <laughs> no. You got to know ahead of time yeah. what's going to be good. We know how to make a burrito. Nothing personal. We have to know what we want. To do. Okay. Yeah. All the, right. you, there's a. Uh, I don't want to say there's a reason you don't have a burrito shop, but we know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Slam. Yeah. Oh, that gives my burrito shop That's dreams. It. <laughs> it. Well, one of the funniest things is when I, last time I was out in San Francisco, a friend of mine works at the Whole Foods out there, and uh, her and I were just sitting back laughing at everyone using the build your own burrito bar, which you know to me is an anomaly. I'm just like, this is going to be funny, you know. So like her and I were just sitting back, just laughing as people tried to assemble and roll their own burritos, and it's just like. That's I why I do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. A few people, yeah, like when they heard me laugh, they asked for a, a tip or two. So I rolled two of them for them. People yeah. did too. So nice. it was nice. Was Definitely fun. Yeah. So, get called out sometimes in social events too, like at moped rallies and stuff like that. Like sometimes, like it'll be like a build your own burrito thing. And I come out with this monster burrito and everyone's looking at me like theirs is all falling apart. So, what else about your store will stick out to you? Uh, well, I don't know. Each, I do the design for all the places, so it's like, I, it's whatever strikes me. You know, like, it, I have a tribute to California in each one of my shops because that's mm -hmm. where burritos come from. Burritos as I know them. That's where they're from. That's what I do. So, it's it's just whatever strikes me. You know, in East York, the bathrooms are like an exact replica of Alcatraz. So, like, you walk in... <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, Alcatraz, of course, in California. And, uh, you, you walk in, and it's just, it had like a super institutional feel. It was built in the 50s with cinder blocks. And I was like, this is like, I feel like Alcatraz <laughs> all the time. And, you know, so I used Martha Stewart's paint, you know, like, <laughs> Martha ironic. Stewart's, yeah, Martha Stewart's uh, guacamole is with the green in there. And, uh, yeah, just did it as, you know, true to Alcatraz as a kid. They try and get that feeling of maybe being in California. You might like stop and see Alcatraz while you're there. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever tried to escape from your bathroom? Like, oh, yeah. Like definitely. Through the, you find like a, you pull the toilet out and there's like a hole in the wall. Uh, well, they would get to the kitchen. You know, you know, <laughs> <It's whatever>. authentic. <laughs> Free burritos. Yeah. That's what motivated them. Yeah. yeah. yeah, so, yeah that's why, you yeah, know, plastic forks say it can't be. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> we know that you have some 
homemade sauce that you sell at your place. Tell us about that. Well, it's, I can't call it homemade because it's not made at my house, but, uh, oh, well, okay. it used to be. But, uh, anyways, it's, yeah, that's my friend Mark, uh, old punk rock friend of mine. He was in, uh, a couple bands like Six South and, uh, I'm trying to think what his other ones were. A bunch of other bands. Uh, drawing a blank here. I was in two of them. Oh, it's just, uh, old grumpy Mark. Uh, yeah, and he's, it's true to his name because, uh, it, well, when I started making burritos at, uh, at my house, he had been making salsa out of, his, out of his house for a few years. And so naturally, like one day I was just like, Hey, you ever think about making hot sauce? And he was like, Actually, I have and I brought some for you. You know, so it's like, <laughs> like also. So yeah, we teamed up there and yeah, it's, it's kind of grown since it's, it's still his third job and everything, but he, he definitely loves it. Even, uh, no matter every time I put the order in, he's like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a little uh, name, huh? yeah, definitely. He is grumpy. It is true. It, <laughs> I wouldn't say that they're made with love. They're made with, with anger. <laughs> <laughs> and it has some interesting names. What are your favorite, uh, hot sauce names? Oh, so it's a good question. Well, I brought, brought you guys Chris and Dracula there. Uh, there's this dude named Dracula and apparently he didn't like garlic very much. <laughs> so if you have that. It's got a, it's a hot sauce with that. It's got like a more of a roasted garlic kind of flavor going on with it. Uh, so it's, you, a little sweet and savory, more than an average hot sauce. You want to use this before you go out kissing them, right? No, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, Dracula. He was he was a suave dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's always hanging out with the ladies. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from garlic was one of his keys for why I was hanging out with the ladies. <laughs> Well, let's talk about some of your other endeavors. You mentioned uh, a moped rally. I'm interested to hear about that because in my mind, I just see like um, Italian mopeds, like all these different bright colors. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it's a, well, definitely not a scooter. Okay. A scooter looks like you're riding around the town on the toilet. You know, like you're in that toilet posture, <laughs> like you're reading the paper down the street. You know, like mopeds are like tiny little 50 cc engines. They can barely move you. They got pedals on them, and uh, basically we just find them in people's garages and fix them up and uh i grew up well i had one of the houses i grew up in was a farm so i always had dirt bikes to play around with and i was always in charge of fixing them when i broke them so uh anytime i see an old moped i'm just like oh too easy i can totally fix this you know so, <laughs> uh but you know what i found you know uh when i got into it over in york uh i found a few friends over in lancaster that were just like hey you know like we're into mopeds too we have we have our moped gang over here. And I was just like, okay, cool. You know, so hanging out with them, they were connected to, there's actually a national moped enthusiast group. And yeah, it's a uh, moped army. It's America's <laughs> toughest moped gang. And, uh, uh, it's a fun place where, you know, like people that are into old mopeds, you know, just talk about things and, uh, different gangs hold, well, I guess I technically have to call them clubs, but there, there's no gang activity. <laughs> there's no fighting. <laughs> no, no. They used to have boxing matches, actually, which was cool, but, uh, huh. uh, you know, like they host rallies and I've been to, you know, like Louisville, Kentucky has, uh, has a big rally every year, uh, hosted by the Urban Bandits. And there's been, I don't know, three to 500 people riding around Louisville on mopeds. And it's, it's awesome. It's really fun. So. I, I, I love the idea of it. It's awesome. Yeah. It just, every, like, tons of people on underpowered, very slow bikes cruising around. <laughs> yeah. What's the demographic? Like, all across the board? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, the one guy that rides with us, he's actually, uh, 76 years old, named Jerry. Really cool dude. Lives down by the, down by the river. And in a van? No. No, actually, in a really nice house. He's got a cool pontoon boat. Yeah. And sometimes we go down to his house, go swimming. Wow. Yeah, Jerry's, he's a really nice guy. Cool. So, Very into cool. mopeds too. He he does them perfectly. Like he was around when they first got big in the seventies, and man, he restores them perfectly every time. So. so how how many do you have? I have hundred and ten of them right now. Hundred and ten mopeds. Yeah. Oh my once you once you get a couple, people know you have them, and they're just like, ah, my uncle has one in his garage. Do you want it? I'm just like, sure. You know, I'd rather <laughs> rather take it than have it just you know die or you know rot or have somebody yeah. that doesn't know what to do work on it. So. So you're like the moped emperor of your own <laughs> moped empire. Emperor well, true. It's true. One day I hope to have moped delivery at the shop, so only when it's nice. Yeah. That's a great idea. And don't expect You've it to get there fast. When we yeah. feel like it. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Well, I live like four blocks from your Lancaster store, so maybe we can That'll work, work that out. I think we can work that out. <laughs> so are there any other interesting clubs or gangs that you're a part of? <laughs> 
Oh, there's a few, but uh, the York Beard and Mustache Club, those guys are really cool. I uh, started up just beard and mustache enthusiasts and the ladies who love them. Uh, it's uh, Actually, there's a few guys from Lancaster. Uh, Shane has just done a few competitions. He went out to Vegas, and uh, there's a beard and mustache competition coming up in Philly. Lancaster actually hosted the national competition. Yeah. Uh, I think that was last uh, summer, maybe two summers ago. Yeah, I think it was 2011. Yeah, 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 about, yeah about two years ago now, and yeah, that's awesome. I, I saw pictures. It was yeah. pretty. It was pretty crazy. Definitely. So, how did you get into um, this? Oh, the beard and mustache. Oh, the. Yeah. It's oddly enough. Uh, I grew my first mustache out. Uh, there's a guy named uh, Charles that runs BurritoEater.com, dot com, and he you know, rates all of San Francisco's burritos. And I grew a mustache out in respect because he rates them in mustaches. And you know, like from all my research, it's just like every time you get a great burrito the burrito maker had a great mustache and this is male and female. So <laughs> they, it's, it's kind of just what good burrito makers do is grow, you know, this particular mustache. So yeah. I got into that. And then, you know, when the beard and mustache guy started, yeah, I was right there along with him. Okay. Okay. As a beard aficionado. Yeah. Uh, and fe- co-founder of the bearded brotherhood here in Lancaster. <laughs> yeah. I have to ask, how long does it take to get the curl on the on the mustache? Because uh, I might I just never have gotten <laughs> long enough mustache to do anything with. Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it depends. Every person is different, you know. Like, yeah. Some people go Grizzly Adams in three days. Uh, this one took me about six months. Wow. Wow. And I've had it. This one I've had for over two years now. So you, you just like evenly trim the inside and let the out, outside grow out. Is that how you? It's kind of like a bonsai. Yeah. yeah. It's, you use like wire and everything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to, to train it. <laughs> no, no, just it, it eventually, you know, just like you're yeah. twisting it, but in reality, you're keeping everything in place. Everybody thinks you're looking cool, but really, it's just like I'm making sure my mustache is going to the side. <laughs> you know? Do you worry about children thinking that you're the bad guy? What do you mean? Well, it's always the bad guy. I guess obviously that, not. <laughs> that handlebar mustache, and they always like twist it. <laughs> no, sorry, but, uh, don't actually, think about that. Yeah, no. uh Kids are, uh, kids seem to love the burrito shop. Like, it's kind of funny. Like, I would think kids are a lot less picky than their parents in most cases. So, mm-hmm. it's pretty sweet. The mustache makes me think conquistador. <laughs> you're, you're, you're here. Yeah, burrito yeah. conquistador, that'll work. Sure. And you know, if you ever go to India, you will find the highest concentration of mustaches. In the oh, really? I was there earlier this year and I was in a room randomly, randomly selected, and like 14 out of 15 guys had a mustache. Nice. Awesome. It's really. It's really a hit right now. Wow. Did you feel honored? I felt sad that I couldn't participate. <laughs> you should have grabbed a marker and just calmed down. That's true. We do, uh, at the burrito shop, we do uh, March Mustache Madness usually, and we'll, we can give a discount based on how awesome we feel your mustache is. Really? And women are, of course, encouraged to join. So. Okay. Wh- okay. What Sometimes we just give the ladies the discounts and don't tell them about it. Because of, <laughs> <laughs> we know we're back eating every day in March. <laughs> can can you use artificial means to create a mustache as a woman? Of course. Okay, great. And it's based on effort, you know. No hormones necessary. No, but I mean, if, you, if that's your thing. Her next question is: Do you serve the grasshopper? Oh no, burrito no like she it, wants it. I would occasionally do it as a special, but yeah. What for about? her, for her, you would, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the uh, chicken and brains burrito? Yeah, we uh, normally for Halloween we do a uh, free brains burrito for anybody dressed like a zombie. Really? Yeah. I just I want to try it. I, I it's one of those things. <laughs> yeah, that would be one of those things to be like I I did this and I don't, I don't know <laughs> I, I don't know what that would mean yeah. in my life. I mean maybe a couple years down the road all of a sudden I have a burrito shop because it's like contagious or something. Yeah, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, and do you eat any other kind of like awful like odd bits of animals you know like uh sweetbreads or you know liver you know do you eat anything, anything like that i eat squ- i eat stuffed squid that's that not a lot of people, on, a lot of people <laughs> got i love the tentacles oh of course yeah yeah, yeah. yeah squid's delicious yeah so mm-hmm. people usually find that odd but there's nothing else weird i think if you get down on a squid you, I mean, as long as you're not like thinking about like brains normally people are okay with it I have an oxtail. That yeah. was weird, but good. Two oxtails, delicious. Oh, man. Yeah, marrow's good. I don't know if you had marrow before. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> so what about Beyond Burritos? Any other kind of food or restaurant business that you're... Oh, yeah. I got the 
uh, picked up the Fulton bar over on the east side of town, doing it as the Hotel Fulton, uh, trying to take it back a little bit and uh, breathe some new life into the place. I think it would be an awesome uh, kind of like a Midwest whiskey bar uh, set up around a neighborhood bar as well. So, And that's what the place was planned as originally. You know, as Emily and Urban built it as Lancaster's first suburb of that end of Lancaster. And it was supposed to be the social hub, and why not make it that again? Yeah. It's... Explain to me what a whiskey bar is, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's definitely it's a comfortable place. It's uh yeah somewhere very casual, and it, one thing one of my my goals with it is to actually train people to enjoy whiskey. You know, a lot of people when they it's kind of it's whiskey has become you know pretty popular. It has become the same kind of deal that wine has. Where you're like, so if you go to a fancy restaurant, they'll hand you the wine list and you would look at it and be like, close your eyes, uh, that one, you yeah. know? <laughs> and, you know, whiskey's starting to become the same way. Everyone's just like, oh, this whiskey's good because it was 60 bucks. And it's just like, that's not, like, price doesn't make a good whiskey. Yeah. So actually being able to have a whiskey selection that's all the same price, you know, say like three bucks for, you know, a shot of whiskey. And it's these 30 whiskeys, you know, that way you can actually, you know, try one without like breaking your pocketbook. Yeah. And, you know, actually try like two or three and actually be able to compare them and, you know, pull different notes out of it and start to actually get into it. So what sparked your love of whiskey? Did you have whiskey with brains in it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. I could try that. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Uh, when I, that's just, uh, you know, with uh, my original, you know, like thing, I was always like the burrito thing has brought about a fascination with food. That has expanded uh, beyond just burritos. And I, I started researching, you know, like in my burrito research, I started going to places like, you know, Chicago and Ohio and just being like, all right, okay, there aren't any good burritos here. What are you guys eating? And everyone's eating at these, you know, neighborhood bars and they're just doing, you know, whiskey selections and they're doing really, really solid food. And so I, I have, for the last four or five years, I've been researching in particular neighborhood bars in the Midwest and. I finally found a spot to do it here in Lancaster, so really excited about that. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I look forward to educating myself with whiskey. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Well, yeah, there, there's a lot to learn, and it, you know, it's one of those strange similarities to wine where there's a lot of different notes in it. It's all about you know, personal enjoyment and what you get out of it. So, Well, Rob, you're definitely an interesting man, and you've got lots of <laughs> amazing things that we talked about. Very fun. So, uh, how can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about you or any of your endeavors? Oh, I'm trying to think. If yeah, well, I just come into the shop and ask somebody, you're know, like, we'll talk to you yeah, about things other than burritos at the shop. So, just stop by the shop and grab a burrito, chat with us a little bit, and we'll tell you what we're up to. Oh, it's uh, 227 North Prince, uh, right across from the community. Thanks again for talking to us, Rob. Oh, of course. Thanks. We hope you've been enjoying the Lancast. This episode was produced by myself, David Moulton, with show notes by Lauren Slusser. All pertinent links to this episode can be found in the show notes at thelancast.com. If you specifically liked this episode, we ask that you consider making a donation. Every little bit helps. Even a dollar a show can keep us going. If you would like to help support us in that way, you can visit thelancast.com slash donate. And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and tell a friend about the show. So, for the Lancast, I'm David Moulton. And I'm Becky Svensson. Asking, are you in the cast? Interesting adventures. I speak like Kirk, Captain Kirk. High five. Doesn't he talk like that? I don't know yeah. what <laughs> will happen next. You didn't think I knew that, did you? There's something on the wing. <laughs> Some thing. <laughs> I can roll with the nerds sometimes. I'm so proud of you right now. <laughs>